Welcome back rum fans, my name's Steve the Barman and I'm here to help you on your rum journey by mainly focusing on rums under £50. In this video today, I'm going to be taking on the best Australian rums. Now before I go any further, I have to give a big shout out. No, not to my brother from another mother, Steve the Bartender. He's been busy making babies with cat, congratulations you two. But I have to give a shout out to uh, Charlie, one of my members who we luckily got to meet uh, a couple of weeks ago. He came over from Australia and he said to me a couple of months ago, like, Steve, I can bring you like four rums. What would you like? I said to him, without question, Bundy is the one I want. You bring me some Bundy. The other three are your choice. And these are the rums that he bought. So, Charlie, it was a pleasure meeting you. And thank you very much for that. Now, before I go any further, I just want to hear from the rest of you Australians. If you were coming over to see me in the UK, what, I always want Bundy. What other three runs would you pick? I, has Charlie done well? This is his choice. Are these the three, the best that Australia has to offer? Or are there better? Let me know in the comments below. So let's dive into the first one. Bundy or up as we used to call it. I don't, I'm assuming it's still it's still called underproof rum. So I assume you still know it is up. Uh, the other one is OP overproof that they've got there. I've got so many kind of lovely memories of Bundy. I was out, I was lucky enough to go to Australia, a sort of millennium. Um, and I was just everywhere, I just fell in love with it, you know, back in. So we're talking like literally me. 15 years into my sort of bar, is that the right time? Five years, sorry, five years into my kind of whole bar journey and stuff like that. Or just at every bar we went to, there was Bundy and Coke on draft, or you could have little chases of Bundy OP. I just fell in love with it. It was just such a great, great thing. I don't think I ever had it neat too many times. I definitely had the overproof neat a few times, but definitely, I'm not sure if I ever had this thing. I've had it a few times in the UK. We've got it in for kind of like Aussie, what, uh, what's the date, Aussie day, uh, it's like the, I forget what the date is now, 20th of, 25th of uh, January or whatever it is, Australia day, something like that, we used to do student bars around, we used to go mental for like Australia day and all that sort of stuff, um, but it's been really hard to get of late and I know they've had some floods out there as well, but it's just, it's been impossible to get in the UK for a long, long time, so I've been really looking forward to this, this must be my first sample of Bundy in 12 plus years, probably close to 13, 14 years. So Bundy, up. <laughs> it's a lot better than Captain Morgan's. It's, it's a really, really good rub in that sense. It is an inoffensive, easygoing, starter rum let's be brutally honest it's not gonna win you know you're not going up against sipping rums but i tell you what there's a reason why captain morgan sells a shed load of rum and it's because it's so easy going it's so easy drinking and this is no different it's not actually that sweet to be honest it's not much to it to be honest you've got the woody bit of there you've got a little bit of caramel sweetness going on there little subtle hint of spice but, you know, there's no real depth of character. But if you're drinking Bundy, you, you don't drink Bundy for that. You don't drink Bundy for a sipping rum. You drink Bundy for a good time. It's a good time rum. Speaking of good times, look, we got to do it. And we the Bund, Bundy and Coke is the signature serve. And here's an interesting fact for you. Um, for those of you that sort of see Bundy, Bundaberg, in the ginger beer in, this, in the supermarkets over here in the UK, it's not the same company. Many people think it is. It's, it's really not the same company. Uh, they're just in the town. I'm assuming it's a town. City is a town. I'm going to call it a town of Bundaberg. That's all it is. They come from the same place, but they're not the same business. So, uh, yeah, Bundy, Bundy and Coke. Oh, God, I love her. Bundy, oh, Bundy, Bundy OP and Coke. That was even better. But here we go. Bundy and Coke. What is it? It can only be 37.5%. Yeah, 37 Come at me all you like, but I say it time and time again. If I want a rum and coke, I want an easygoing rum and coke. I don't want the rum to hit me in the face. If I want rum to hit me in the face, I'm going to sip it neat. If I want a good time, I'll tell you what, that, that is a cracking drink. It's a really, really good drink. Inoffensive, but boy, if you want a, if you want a sesh, if you're having a barbecue or anything like that, that is a quality rum and coke just to get stuck into all afternoon. 
If they had the marketing budget and took on the likes of Captain Morgan's, that would not, because it's the same, it's the same market they're going after, let's be honest. That, that, that is 10 times better than Captain Morgan's. 10 times better than Captain Morgan's. It ain't as good as any of this slot behind the bar, but it's a fantastic rum and coke. It is fantastic. And it, it's just my memories. It's good time. You know, you, you cannot take offense at that. It's just a great, great rum and coke. So moving on to the other three, honestly, I don't really care what they taste like because I've got my Bundy now. I'm really, really happy with that. So rum number two that he brought over, Beanley. Now, Beanley has been on my radar now for quite a while. For some reason, I don't know why, uh, this has gone quite big in, I, I call them the, I, this affectionately, but the rum geek community. I've heard it a lot, being mentioned a lot of times on the rum cast podcast, which I absolutely love. Go and listen to that podcast. So much knowledge to be had there. Uh, reviews and all that. Beanley is a brand to take note of. But when I've had chats with a few Australians about Beanley, they've, yeah, they've kind of laughed at me. You know, really? Beanley? You know, it's, it's shocking rum. It's terrible rum. So it's kind of one of those things that's like the Australians don't really, or from the Australians I've chatted to, don't really hold this in high regard. But, you know, as I say, it's been out there. And just to give you some point of reference, when Plantation, it wasn't this one, obviously, because it's Jamaica, but when Plantation did their Australia rum, it was actually Beanley rum that they used. So let's dive into this. You can see it's been opened, but I've not had any yet. I opened it. I was down in the Black Parrot. It was where we met Charlie and Geraint, one of my other members as well. Uh, we were in the Black Parrot. Dave Brady that sort of runs it there. It was kind of off. So I opened them for him uh, down there and Geraint as well. But, uh, but I didn't actually have any. So these are my first tastes of this. Uh, just to give you some point of reference as well, Beanley uh, is kind of uh, south of Brisbane, Queensland area, um, just literally right on the outskirts of Brisbane. And the other fact is they're supposedly, I don't, I don't, again, I don't know whether it's marketing or play on words, but they are supposedly Australia's oldest running or longest running rum distillery. So the rum I've got here is their five-year-old double cask rum. Uh, the only bit I really, really know about it, the double cask is brandy cask and ex-bourbon barrel cask in there. So uh, let's dive in and let's have a cheeky a little sort of smell and taste. On the smell, it smells quite inviting for me actually. It does smell that it could be quite sweet. Um, on the aroma, I'm getting a little bit of wood, plenty of sort of vanilla y, maybe sort of caramel. Oh, I'll tell you what, that actually does remind me of. It reminds me of a creme brulee. That's that's what I'm kind of getting off that. Unmistakably punchy up front, vanilla. That's kind of what they're with this sort of little bit of wood on the backbone. But I'm expecting this from the aroma, I'm expecting this to be a little bit sweet. About six months ago, and it still is, but six months ago, that would have been right up my street actually. Yes, it's got a little bit of sweetness to it there. Um, but if I was putting this uh, using the Rumex scores for this, like the Rumex app, I'd be I'd be scoring that a three out of five for sweetness. Uh, I'd be scoring it about two out of five for woods, but I'd be giving it a big sort of three, maybe even four out of five for fruitiness. There's a little bit of vanilla there, but it's not that pronounced it's not that forward I'm saying it's not that sweet in the grand scheme of things it smells it smells like it's going to be a lot sweeter than what it actually is that's a real pleasure to sip neat um no alcohol bite to it 40 percent i'm assuming yeah 40 percent abv no alcohol oh that's interesting i just got like a little subtle hint of mint coming in the back there. That, that's just completely shocked me. I've never had that from a rum before. There is big sort of mint notes that come out in that. It just reminded me of a, a mojito straight away. But yeah, I, I quite, I do actually quite like that. That's, that's not gonna sit gathering dust behind the bar. That's gonna be drinking from that. Um, from the taste, for me, I, I can instantly tell, I don't need to mix this. From the taste of it, uh, it ain't a daiquiri rum. I ain't ever gonna mix that in a daiquiri, but, I tell you what, uh, rum and ginger, rum and coke, um, even in rum punches or fun, the fun tropical drinks like that, that is going to work exceptionally well in that. I don't know what to buy. I can't. I'll have to go back and see what the prices are. Um, I've kind of seen them in dollars. Um, but to relate that, do you know what? That that's actually quite decent. Hmm. 
Good shout, Charlie. Good shout. Well, then the next run we're going to move on to is this husk, uh, as you can sort of see from the label there. Hopefully, that's the right way around. It is an Australian agricole. Um, let's just get into the legalities here for one second. Let's be dull and boring. Obviously, this can't legally be called an agricole. Agricoles have to come from French uh, countries, French speaking countries, uh, because they have their AOC. It, to basically to relate this, it's like the UK, it's like us in the UK claiming that we can make champagne. You can't. You can only make champagne in the region of Champagne in France. Anything outside of that is sparkling wine. So technically, by the eyes of the rum gods, technically this is the cane juice rum. But you have to argue that no one's ever going to really, at this precise moment, because they're not a big international brand, no one's really going to come after them for calling it an agricole rum. So for... And, it, and let's be honest, in this day and age, for people where rum is just coming into the fold, where kind of people don't really understand the difference between cane juice and agricole, the best way to describe that would be an agricole rum. People understand what an agricole rum is. People don't necessarily understand what a sugar cane juice rum is. So where is Husk? Well, Husk, again, is just south of Brisbane. It's kind of Gold Coast area. Um, between Gold Coast and Byron Bay. I know I know where that is, but interestingly, just over the border. So whereas that is kind of uh, Queensland, this is actually New South Wales because the border is right there, sort of south of the Gold Coast, just south of Brisbane, south of Gold Coast. So is actually New South Wales rum. Uh, what else can we tell you about this? Australian agriculture, 40% ABV, I'm assuming. Where are we? Have we got an ABV? I, I'm assuming there's an ABV on here. Is it just tap water? Oh, right at the bottom. Tiny little letters right at the bottom, 40% ABV. But the important thing I should have said that right up top about husk, and this is kind of what I like about husk as well, and the limited knowledge I know about them, they are the first in Australia, and maybe outside of other, I don't know how to basically describe this, but essentially they are farm to bottle. So they grow their own sugar cane, harvest it, juice it, ferment it, distill it, bottle it, boom, rum. On site, farm to bottle. There ain't many distilleries in the world, let alone agriculture, that can claim to do that. Because even in the Caribbean, a lot of the distilleries are buying in their molasses or sugarcane from other places. Not many distilleries around the world can claim the fact that they are farm to bottle. So big props to Husk for that. I kind of like that. That's pretty awesome. There's a couple of other little things on the back here. Obviously, they kind of um, tell you to mix up in a mojito or a caipirinha. Harvested, so that's where it kind of, I researched that, but it says Harvest 2020 in there. So that's kind of what prompted me about the farm to bottle thing. Harvest 2020, batch 11, bottle 53. And they've got the cane variety on here as well. Not that this means anything to me, but Q240, Q208. So that's the cane that's gone into this. So let's have a little taste of this. And um, while I'm going this, while I'm thinking, I've in, all the time in the back of my head, I've got Windy kind of laughing at me going, ba oh, baby sick or vomit, because that's what a lot of people think agricole is. That's what I thought it was. You know, I've had some really nasty agricoles that put me off. But I tell you what, just recently, thanks to Garain and a few others, just recently, I kind of get into my cane juice rums. I've realised that there's a whole world out there above the sort of really nasty rums that smell like vomit um, between uh, between them and the good stuff. So let's have a little taste of husk. So I'll tell you what, on the nose, right, this doesn't windy. I'm, I'm talking directly to windy and a few others, but I'm talking direct. It doesn't smell like baby sick windy. It doesn't. It really doesn't. It smells really inviting really grassy really floral it's got a little bit of sweetness to it it's a little bit of kind of i don't know what it is like fresh young pineapple unripe pineapple to it if that's kind of right is what i'm th thinking but that's the thing i'm just kind of understanding about cane juice rums they are that's where the floral rums come out it's where the grassy notes the citrus notes come out they're totally different to kind of molasses based rums and i'm actually getting really into them and tasting that it's actually really pleasant. This has got this undertone of sugar to it without being sweet. It's got the sugary taste without being sweet. It's that floral note. There is grassy. 
it's kind of like a real creamy mouthfeel to it. I could quite happily sip that. I do love my white rums neat. I could quite happily sip that. Probably to the agricole, the cane juice lovers, that's probably, you know, nowhere near their top rums. Nowhere near their top rums. But for me, I really do enjoy that. And the thing I've just noticed, and look at, I don't know where we'll see that on the old close up. Hopefully, you will. Can you see the amount of uh, awards that's got around there? It's got loads of awards around there. I don't know what they are, whether they're all Australians or. Oh, Melbourne. Yeah, there are a lot of Australian awards on there. But, understandably, that's really decent. I, I really like that. That is going to be a great daiquiri rum. A great tea punch rum. A great mojito rum. As they say in the bottle, caipirinha rum. That's going to be great. But, don't be shy of drinking that neat. Because that luxurious, creamy mouthfeel to it. I don't know whether it's sweetened. I don't know whether it's got any sugar added to it. But it has got this luxurious velvety mouthfeel to it. I really like that. Australia, you're you're doing us proud at the moment. Well done. So then the final of the four rums, and I've left this till last for a reason, because I've smelt this. I could not help not smell it when I let Dave and the gang have a little sort of sample down at Black Parrot in London. Because this smelt like nothing else. And Charlie was so excited for me to kind of smell it. I resisted tasting it. But I have smelt it. So this is substation number 41. Now, interestingly, I can't find too much about this on the old interwebs. And, and, and that hints to me for one reason. I think, especially this happens a lot with US and UK and US brands. When you can't find too much about them online, it means they are an agency brand. They are essentially uh, a brand that has just bought up certain rum from somewhere got someone else to do something for it and they've bottled it and sold it there is no distilling or there is obviously distilling involved to get the rum in the first place but the brand itself substation number 41 uh, there is no distilling from their side from what i can gather if anyone's got any facts or knowledge on this rum please let me know in the comments below i would love to but it's you know you can spot them a mile away especially with the uk brands you can spot them a mile away when they're just agency brands um there's absolutely no information out there about them because there's no information to be had. But that said, it ain't about the brand or the history or anything like that. It's about the liquid in the bottle for a lot of people. So let's, let's crack this open again. And as soon as I take this lid off this, the smell I'm gonna get, if I could eventually get the like, cork off, there we go, the, the cap off. It's maple. <laughs> it's flipping. If I if you if I'd have smelt that and you said which country does this come from, I would a hundred percent without even thinking about it gone Canada. That is maple syrup in a bowl. It's just like crazy. I've got the tasting notes in front of me here of what they kind of think, and they've put rich vanilla and toffee like notes. If you get rich vanilla and toffee from that, I'll crazy maple. It's, it's a jar of maple syrup. That's what it smells like. And the other two things they've got, fruitcake and plum pudding. Uh, you'll notice a tight oak even with it, and even a hint of white pepper on the nose. I ain't, I ain't getting maple syrup. 100% maple syrup. Just so happens I quite like maple syrup as well. So the point on this, I think this is 36. So this is 37. That's a 40. That's a 40, isn't it? Bundy's 37 as well, I think, isn't it? Yeah, 37. So... You know, 37 percenter, so, oh, not even legally a rum in the EU, 37 and a half percent. Interesting, but are we going to hold that against it? I flipping love maple. Does it taste of rum? That's what we want to know, first and foremost. This is the crazy thing with this, because it ain't half as sweet as what you think it's going to be from the nose. It is really dry, lots of tannins, the maple sort of semi comes out but doesn't really come out in the taste i would get there eventually but it'd take me a while to realize that that was rum it's not rum in your face but there is rum undercurrent to it but there is more way more spice to it i say those tannins really does kind of get me underneath the tongue and in the back of the throat i suppose you call those tannins sort of oak because this has been aged for a couple of years i think i think i remember seeing it. it's been aged for two years in a barrel um but yeah, it's just bizarre because you get nothing but maple on the nose, but then in the mouth, it's like spice, probably toffee, uh, toffee on the taste. 
the spice and oak in there. It's really, really bizarre. You think up front, you think that is a maple spiced rum. But on a tasting, you're like, hang on a minute, where's the spot? Where, where's that sweetness? Where's that maple gold? And this is an interesting one for me. Whereas I find it really easy to pick what to mix those with, you know, as, as I said, straight out mixer all day long, Coke, ginger beer, fruity sort of drinks like that, rum punch, you know, Coke all day, bit of ginger, that easily daiquiri tea punches, mojitos, caipirinhas, this I'm struggling with. I don't think for me that's a rum and coke rum. In fact, I'm not even going to bother trying because I know for me that's not a rum and coke rum. It would be quite a quirky in cocktails. It's definitely not a daiquiri rum. I think the one big mixer for that for me is ginger beer. Probably not even ginger ale. Uh, it's ginger beer. I think that is a ginger beer rum. And I sort of, so, something in me wants to sort of add orange to it as well. Maybe like orange bitters, a slice of orange or something like that. Or an old fashioned with orange bitters. Something like that, rum fashions I should say. It's really delicious, it really is, because, and this is the thing I, I want to get through to you. The nose, oh my God, you think it's going to be sweet maple syrup. On the taste, you can be further from the truth. So look, where do I sit with Austra the best of Australia? Is this the best of Australia? Let me know, comments below. I'm kind of interested now, I'm fascinated. But I think, look, I, I'm always going to have, let's, let's bring these closer in. Let's, let's get rid of the mixes, let's get the rums in here. I think I'm always going to have a love affair with Bundy. Because I've been there, because I had some great party nights, well, lots of great party nights, Bundy and Coke on draft, I'm always going to have a massive affinity. Are they all facing front? That one, I think, there we go. There we go, that's bad. Uh, I'm always going to have a massive affinity with Bundy. Uh, Bundy up and Bundy OP as well, or UP and OP. I'm, gonna, I'm always going to love them, always, because of memories. But, I do actually quite like the Beanley. I think the Beanley is a great entry level rum. A price, well, I'd be interested to kind of work out the price for you guys in Australia if that is your cheap entry level. Because I'm thinking, you know, when I talk about entry level in the UK, I'm thinking I've rearranged all the flipping rums, isn't I? I I'm thinking, like, I talk people through Bacardi and stuff like that, Bacardi eight year olds. I'm thinking that's your equivalent. If that's cheap enough, that's a great entry kind of level sipper. Uh, mixing rum, I really do. But I'm quite taken back by the husk. I really do like the husk. Um, as I say, it, as I go further down the cane juice journey, that might become like actually not that good. But for me right now, I really, really like that as cane juice liquid. That is really, really tasty. Um, if I'm being brutally honest, and I know Charlie absolutely loved that, but if I'm being brutally honest, that's my least favorite out of the four. The smell, I absolutely love, but the taste for me is kind of not quite matching. But I wanna hear from you Australians. What other rums have you got in your lockers? And what would you recommend? If I can get it, what would you recommend me trying? Because I tell you what, if these to go uh, judging, judge your body, I reckon you've got some great stuff over there.